I think in college, um, it all starts with culture and in trying to provide a, a positive, encouraging culture. Um, again, that's it's not just about swimming fast. It's being a good student, being a good person. Um, those things are really um, paramount to, to what we do and what we believe in. Everybody in our program, at least, is uh, going to have to go pro in, in, in anything besides swimming. I mean, there's a couple people that have those aspirations, but you know, our job is really to develop people first and foremost. I think the better people we have, the better swimmers we're going to have, and that's really kind of what we believe in. That's our basic philosophy. And uh, at the end of the day, we want them to be successful when they're 25 and 30 years old and swim as fast as they can and be competitive and win because that's the name of the game as well. But understanding that we're about the total development of the person first and foremost. Basically, it really helped elevate our program because uh, you know, it, it proved that you can do it here at Kentucky. Like winning the national title is you know, the ultimate. I mean, being an NC2A champion is, for anybody, I think is, is really cool. And so it just you know, proved that you know, Danielle was really talented and worked hard, but you know, if you got the talent and the work ethic that we have the type of program, that can make you a national champion. For us, that was really significant. And she kind of represented everything that about our program in terms of academics. She was the Elite 90 award winner. Um, we've had three Elite 90 award winners in the last four years. That's the highest GPA at the NC2A championship. So, um, you know, classroom overall development as a person and swimming, swimming success is really what we're about. And Danielle really like epitomized the, that in all three areas. When I first took over, like our men's GPA, for example, was like a 2.8 and now we're at 3.5. And so, you know, that I think that's a reflection of our culture. Our women's team was uh, number one in the department with a 3.7 GPA. Again, I think that's part of our culture and what we believe in. So um, trying to find people that just want to work hard and do it at some place where it's really never been done before. Um, there's been some good swimmers in the in the history of Kentucky. We've had some good diving uh, with uh, Mike Lydon and, and uh, Ted Hawtaw, our current coach, does a really good job with our divers. But there hasn't been a consistent like winning program. Um, there's been some good individuals and some good teams, but we're trying to build a program that's consistently in that top 10 neighborhood. I don't think we're quite there, but we're we're getting close. We're trying to find people that um, obviously it starts with recruiting. Um, trying to find people with the right character and the right ability to swim in the SEC. It's the most competitive league in the country. There's other great conferences, Big 12, ACC, Pac-12, um, but I think top to bottom, the SEC is really competitive. And so we want people that want to have a competitive experience. Um, and again, trying to attract some elite athletes. And we've, we've attracted a few, but I think that's an area we can grow. Um, I think in, if you look around the country, uh, I was talking to our baseball coach about this, but if you look at the, the teams that win in football, uh, whether that's Alabama or Clemson, they typically are number one and number two in recruiting. You know, Texas, whatever, men are typically number one or number two in recruiting, and they're right there. And the same thing in the women's swimming, right? And so, uh, so I think any college would say, I mean, it's we. I think we're really good about developing people. I think we've done that as well as anybody in the country. Um, but I think for us to be continue to get better, we need to be um, top 10 recruiting every year, you know, mm -hmm. in consecutive years. Uh, um, that's the hard part. Once you put together like four really good recruiting classes, then I think you have a pretty good team. Well, now we're on this early recruiting cycle, which, um, is kind of problematic, I think, for probably for many coaches, really. Um, you know, you're having conversations with, you know, 15, 16 year olds a lot, and you're asking them to make a decision that could affect, well, in, in some cases, could affect them for the next six years, um, two more years of high school, and then four years of college, but even beyond that. So um, I really wish we'd go back to the like earlier rules with recruiting. I think most coaches do, but you have to keep up with you know all the other schools, and there's been a, a premium on, on early recruiting. Um, but and we're also trying to find the kids that can develop and do a good job with scouting um, people that may have some untapped potential. Um, 
So I think I think that's critical too. You, you got to find people like that, you know, because we're not going to get all the five stars, you know. We want to find some three stars that we can make into five stars and and, and uh, um, people that got five star hearts and that really want to be part of a good program.